Hi, I just wanted to give you a quick review of what I've done for my start page. I've been doing this for a long time for me and the kids where I created a website. Um, actually, see if my old one's still available. Don't know if it still works. Yep, I had my old one where I actually built this in a web builder and then I had these tabs across the top to click on the different my internet's a little slow right now because there's something going in the background where I had all these different pages of links and things because I don't like to be typing in the address bar all the time. And I don't trust links from places where I haven't tested them out. So I just decided to make my own. Plus by having my own start page, um, I could go to anybody's computer anywhere and get access to all my stuff. Um, it was very quick and simple and, and down and dirty. And I have a mobile version of all of this, which puts like one thing, this little place here or this much information, all squished up teeny tiny little things that will show up on my, on my mobile phone so that I can still get to everything. But the tool I use to make this is no longer being supported and I haven't found a tool that I like. Um, I've looked at lots of web builders and I hate them all. Um, they're either too limiting or too expensive or whatever. So I went back to this tool right here. It's called start.me. You can get a paid version. You can do a lot for free. Um, the paid version is not very expensive. Uh, honestly, I couldn't see a whole lot of difference between the paid version and the free version. It says there's ads, but I never saw any ads. So um, anyway, right here, you can see these are all the pages that I've built. You can also see along the top, these are the page names. You can just click and drag them. So that makes it very simple. I basically, I pulled my Google Calendar in and my to-do list from Todoist, which I'm probably going to abandon both of these for Notion. Um, I've got my comms here. These are things that, you know, communications, things that I wanna do. I've got all the Microsoft links here. I put the clock on, the weather, and the to-do apps. You can see there's several to-do apps that I use, and each one has good features, some bad. I've got my files page with all of these places where I have files stored. These are sites, my blog site, Google Forms, just some things that are probably, some of these will be going away. Google Photos, Photo Bucket, some automation apps, Microsoft Flow, If This Then That, Zapier, Plexi, which is kind of cool if you use OneNote. Um, a weather API, not sure why I have that one stored there. Two calendars, Outlook and Google. I've got business items here. I've got cooking over here, which I think this one's kind of fun, but I can't convince my daughter to use it. These are all good recipe sites. Uh, Blueprint we love for its ability to give you great videos. And it does everything from cooking to spinning and woodworking and knitting and crochet. I like this little site here that has these wonderful little timers. And again, my internet is very slow, but you can set multiple timers. So if you're working in the kitchen and you have several things going and the microwave only has one clock, um, you can put multiple timers in here. So that was kind of cool. And I put a little to-do list for Lindsay. This is just built into this app. And so if she's making Thanksgiving dinner and she wants to make a list of things that she needs to work on, her tasks, and then she can make herself some little notes here and all of this will stay on this page until somebody actually deletes it. So it could be a good place for meal planning or, or something like that. We just haven't used it. I've got all my church links. The kids use all of these Bible study tools here when they're doing their schoolwork. These are some free Bible classes that are pretty good. Some references that were fun articles I wanted to read. Um, some ministries that we believe Leave, do a good job and what they do in some churches and, and organizations. Um, I've got financial links. All of the bills that I owe are pretty much here. Utilities I stuck over there. I've got a homepage with some shopping things. L Lindsay likes to buy her glasses at Zenny, so I just threw that in there. All the insurance companies we deal with, all the shipping, tracking all those packages that we have to order movies we've got all those in fitness information the network how to get to my nas drive log into my orbi some fun things here 
kids have their own page. I used to have their own home page, but I've gone out and looked at all those links and put them in here, separated them into fun, history, government, reading, science. All of these I've pre-approved and the kids can use any of these links anytime. And I know that they're safe sites. We've got our school page. These are the apps that we use for our school. And then the daily things, the kids, I want to them to go to this typing.com and do some typing their character quality information they can get, math links if they want to practice some math, the Bible study tools, um, they have to research hymns. So we've got those here. They've got some elementary classes. All of these I've looked at are really good and offer some great options. Um, high school courses, if they want to do any of that. There's actually free college courses. You can get free courses at MIT or the University of Massachusetts at Boston. These are college level courses that you can take for free online. There's lots of electives I've added. I keep encouraging the kids to do programming. So far, not one of them has, but they have all these links here they could. Um, then we've got some curriculum. These are places I like to buy things from when I'm looking for something. These are all programming places that you can go to for free and the kids can learn to program. And then of course, lots of resources. This is pretty much for me when I'm looking for something. So we've got travel, which is one of my most used pages because I've got all the places where I make my reservations. These are the memberships I have that I can get free or discounted campsites. Then I've got some more discount clubs here. These are my main ones and these are my secondary ones. I've got my trip planner, the RV trip wizard, which is fantastic. If you do any kind of RV travel and you don't use them, I suggest you look into it. I've got our village, which I check into every time we change parks. Um, I've got services like Freightliner and Cummins, so I can find their locations easily and information. The Route 66 Travel Club gets me a discount. I've got links to my car and OnStar. And then I've got the little widget from the RV Trip Wizard, and this shows my current trip. And what I like is you can actually use your pinch and zoom and you can even click on it and get some information. It can't edit my trip, but I can actually at least kind of get an idea of where we're supposed to be without having to actually launch the website. I've been playing around with calendars and logs just to show you what this thing can do. I've got some tasks here, a link to Trello boards. I've got my travel calendar out. I've got a bigger version of that. I've got our school um, if you can see, that's our school schedule that I've set up in a Google calendar so that the kids know what they're supposed to be doing each day at the different times. I've got some logs that all automated stuff that comes in from probably mostly if this, then that. And then I made a page for my mom. And what's great is like on the kids page, I've got a paid account and then I can just share this and add the kids in and they can view it. I could actually give the kids access to edit the page and I will probably give mom the ability to edit her page and then she can add things in. It's pretty simple. There's a little icon up here. So if I was to go to another website, let's say, see if this one will load. My internet is very slow. Okay, so I've got a thing coming up. I could just click on their little, um, what do they call these little things in the extensions? And then it pulls up this and then I can actually save it in any page and any one of those little widgets that I want to. So it's very quick and easy to add new things. Um, it's also very easy to change if I want to edit this one, click on the settings. It does take more clicks, I think, than it should, but I can change the icons. I can make them large icons. I can make them small icons. I can make them a list. I can make them a detailed list. Um, I can make them a cloud, which kind of just, let's do this one, puts them all kind of sloppily in here, one next to another. And let's put it back because I really prefer the icons. And 
that's for the kids. We'll do the bigger icons. All right, so that's pretty simple. You can, the one thing that took me a little to figure out, and I actually had to send off an email and ask, I couldn't move them because when I try to move something, it, it won't move. I can move the items, but I couldn't move the blocks. But if you right click and say organize widgets, then it gives you these blocks and then you click on the little arrow and that lets you move them and then you just close. So that wasn't quite intuitive for me. Um, can copy the pages, can change the themes. You'll see how each one of my pages has a different background. Um, I tried to keep the themes based on what I was doing just to kind of make it fun. And it's very simple. You can even go into this page and say, edit the page. You can have the widget transparency, so you can change that. And then um, you can decide how many columns you want. You have options. You can click on the background. It's pretty simple. There's colors to choose from. There are some images you can pick or you can upload your own, which is very simple. So obviously for mom, I uploaded a moose background. If you know my mom, you'll know why. Um, but that's pretty much it. It's a very simple little tool and quite powerful and pretty fast at responding. As you can see, I've got slow internet, but I'm still able to click on these pages and they load very quickly. And the because it's actually a website, I just set my start page to be this start.me and on my cell phone, I also made the start page to be start.me. What I like about the cell phone app is like this column, it will just be one column. So this will be followed by this, followed by this, followed by this. Um, not quite sure which order it goes in, but they just kind of scroll down. These little carrots, you can, well, I thought, <laughs> on your cell phone, on your cell phone, you can click these little carrots and it'll maximize and minimize these things, but it doesn't seem to be doing that on the website, which I thought it did. So let's see, just me. Okay. Well, anyway, that's how we're using this. And it's been really good. The people I've sent off a couple of questions to support, they've gotten back to me very quickly. One of the things I didn't like is when I first started, it had this plus sign right here and it was bright white. And so when you, it was a white background with a black plus. So you had these big ugly pluses. I sent them a, a thing and said, hey guys, love your tool, but those pluses are ugly. So in a future update, could you get rid of those pluses since there's the plus up here already to add something? Did I really need these big ugly pluses on the bottom of each column? And within an hour or two, they sent me back an email and said, okay, we fixed it. And the big ugly pluses were gone. So um, that was amazing because normally you don't get that kind of response from people, especially when it's a product that you can get for free. So anyway, hope that gives you some ideas of how you can make a start page or what I like to call a launch page so that you can use your um, Windows browser without having to always be typing in the address bar.